Welcome to part one of our three-part lesson on the Flight's microservices project, which is part of the Flight Listing App, or FLAP, case study. In this first part of the lesson, we'll talk about how functional programming is applied to the Flight's microservices case study in order to list airline flights using a Spring web app. You can access all the source code that's available and described in this video and the other two parts that follow at the link at the bottom of the slide. The Flight Listing app, or FLAP case study, showcases a wide range of Java concurrency and parallelism frameworks that either synchronously and or asynchronously communicate with various Spring-based platforms to list airline flights. You can take a look at the Android client that we use and access it at the link below. There's also a video on my YouTube channel that walks through the source code and shows how this client app works as well. FLAP provides a monolithic client server architecture that's implemented to sequentially list airline flights using objects within a single process, which could be accessed by a load balancer and replicated in multiple processes in a data center or backend cluster. This diagram here shows the architecture of the monolithic version of the FLAP case study. As you can see, there's a monolithic app. There's a bunch of objects that communicate with each other by making method calls, and those objects reside within a single process. You can access the source code for the monolithic version of the app at the link at the bottom of this slide. Later flat versions list airline flights and related information buying by spring microservices that can of course be running in separate processes in a cluster environment or data center or cloud. That's what we're gonna focus on in the rest of this lesson. You can get the source code at the bottom of the slide here for the flights microservices version. And we'll talk about the architecture of this solution here throughout the rest of this slide. And then we'll walk through the source code in the next two parts of the lesson. There's a flight uh, portion, which is basically a front end app gateway that uses the Eureka service discovery framework. You can find out about what Eureka is at the bottom of the slide below. That's a framework that was put out by Netflix and is very useful for discovering microservices in a cluster environment. As you can see, the flight portion is essentially the front end that client applications will talk to. So they'll send HTTP requests to the flight portion to the flight controller, which is essentially this front end app gateway. And then it will disseminate the requests to the appropriate backend microservices. We use Eureka for several purposes. In particular, we use it to find and to communicate with all the backend microservices, things like the exchange rate service, the airport service, and various airline services. And we'll talk in a moment about what those services do. The neat thing about using Eureka is it doesn't require us to hard code any ports or host names anywhere in our source code. This information can be discovered when the microservices start up and register themselves with Eureka. In particular, each of these backend microservices registers with the Eureka's service registry. And so each of the microservices when they start up will be registering with the, with the Eureka service registry and then those services, those microservices can be discovered by the flight app gateway in order to be able to carry out its behavior, its processing. The actual registration of the microservices with the Eureka service registry is done in a very declarative way using annotations and property files. We really don't have to write any code literally to do this other than to annotate the various microservices with annotated tags like enable discovery client, as you can see here, and then provide corresponding property files that say things like where to find the Eureka service that's running in our environment. And then of course, telling the microservice that it needs to be Eureka enabled so that it can be part of this whole discovery process. You can read more about the service registry pattern, which is what Eureka implements at the link at the bottom of the slide. The flight app gateway can then access the microservices in various ways. One way it can do it is by accessing it through it, the names of the microservices. For example, when we walk through the code here in the next parts of the lessons, you'll see that there's a method called get services on discovery client. And the flight app gateway uses this to get a list of all the services that have been registered with Eureka. And then it goes through, and in this particular example, it's going to get all the services that are airline related by looking for the airline string or substring that's part of the service name and then collecting that into a list and returning it as a list of strings, which is then used later in the program to do operations only on airline services. So that's one way you can locate services. Another way they can be located and invoked is by using 
the REST template class. And this class, which is very popular when used with synchronous web-based applications, will use Eureka transparently in order to redirect HTTP requests to the appropriate microservice. So again, we'll walk through the code in great detail later in later parts of this, this lesson. But you can see here that what we do is we, if we want to go ahead and um, get a list of airports that the, the flight app is going to be able to return to a, to a mobile client or a web-based client or a browser-based client, what, what, all we have to do is we just have to make a call that uses HTTP colon slash slash, and then we put in a string like airport and then a slash and then the particular airport's endpoint we want to call. And that will then be transparently redirected by Eureka, be discovered and redirected by Eureka to that microservice that has that name that is able to do that. And what we'll get back, of course, will be an array of airport objects, which we then will use with the get body call to turn into an array, and then we can do other stuff with that. Again, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get, get into the source code. But the main point here is we can use a REST template to transparently get Eureka to redirect HTTP requests to the right microservice. We don't use load balancing in our example, but it would be straightforward to use load balancing. So you could actually have multiple microservice replicas, and then Eureka could select amongst them to avoid overburdening any one of those microservices with too much processing. For example, it could use a, a round robin algorithm, or it could look for one that was loaded in a certain way and so on and so forth. But the point there is that all this can be done transparently using REST template, and then Eureka can work kind of in the background to find the right service and load balance the right microservice and so on and so forth. These backend microservices, of course, are used to perform various tasks on behalf on behalf of the flight app gateway. So again, the flight app gateway is the endpoint concentrator, if you will, that a client talks to. So all the HTTP requests go to the flight app gateway. And then from there, it will go ahead and use Eureka to disseminate or redirect further sub requests or sub parts of the processing to the, the appropriate microservice or microservices. So for example, one of the microservices will return a list of all known airports which is important for the client to be able to populate a menu for users to select where they want to fly from and where they want to fly to. Likewise, there's another microservice that returns currency exchange rates. So if you have an airline that returns its prices in euros or pounds or US dollars or yen or whatnot, you can then convert from one currency type to another. You can convert pounds to dollars or yen to euros and so on. And that's something that's done transparently on behalf of a client by the flight app gateway, making the appropriate call to the exchange rate microservice. Likewise, there's also a number of different airline services that provide flight information. For example, what when dates and times when things are available, when uh, what the prices are, and so on and so forth. And this can also be provided back to the client as well. This is what you would use if you're actually trying to get flight listings or flight bookings. And what we've done here is we've, we've implemented a very clear, clever approach where we have common capabilities, a common controller, a common repository, a common service that's generic across airlines. And then we specialize each of those general pieces to be for specific airlines. So for example, we have prices and flight information for American airlines. We have prices and information for Southwest airlines. We could have prices and information for Lufthansa airlines or Nippon airlines or whatever. And these, again, are also separate microservices that can be contacted and managed through the flight app gateway. So clients never see these microservices directly, but we can use them in the back end to scale up and scale out our solution. The particular implementation we're going to look at in the rest of the parts of this lesson will focus on the functional implementation of Flap, which uses synchronous two-way calls via various Java functional parallelism mechanisms. We're working on other versions that will use asynchronous programming frameworks like Java Completable Futures, but right now we're just using Java streams and Java parallel streams to do the implementations. And when you walk through the code, I think you'll be uh, impressed by how expressive and how concise these declarative programming models are using the Java functional programming features. So the FLAP case study has lots more stuff, which we're only going to touch on briefly in the next two videos, but will be covered further in other companion videos that come later in this course. These other videos will show things like uh, use of advanced persistence, such as 
asynchronous database mechanisms like R2DBC. This uh, case study, the one that we're looking at now, the Flights Microservices case study, also shows examples using the Java Persistent architecture, the JPA, and or the Java Persistent API, depending on how you define what A stands for. And uh, other videos we've already done show the Android side. And we also will touch later upon some of the mocking tools we use to test everything automatically. The projects that you'll get if you go to the open source links have quite extensive test code in them using advanced mocking features. And it's very powerful and showcases some really good examples of how to test both monolithic and microservice-based web applications. So that's the end of our overview. I now encourage you to go and watch the next two parts of the video, which actually walk through the source code. First video, the second part in this series focuses on the flight front end app gateway. And then the third video will focus on those microservices we talked about for exchange rate, airline and airport services that are managed and coordinated through the flight app gateway.